the Double A Nutrition Coach Podcast. Welcome, guys, to the second episode of the Double A Nutrition Coach Podcast. And again, any of you who've listened to the first episode, I've got the cheesies intro. So if any of you are any freelance music editors, I would really appreciate if you reached out to me and uh, maybe just help me get a better intro because it doesn't sound very professional. But I've been kindly joined by Alex Mershon of We Are PR Clothing, who's based in Indiana, USA. Indiana, you got it, man. So at the moment, it's 4 to, four to 5 p.m. This is going to be for Alex, and it's a... Uh, 9 till 10 p.m. at the moment. We're just going to be going over um, different topics, which is kind of related to my first episode of the um, podcast where I went over goal setting. But now we're going to be touching on more about pursuing your passion and maybe some of the struggles that and the difficulties that come with it sometimes. Um, thank you for the hearts already, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, some of the difficulties and struggles that come with it, but also the really good things about it and things that we both have learned al- along the way. This is going to be obviously me um, interviewing Alex, but it's also going to be quite conversational. Um, so Alex, I'm just the first question, if you don't mind, obviously you can introduce yourself at the same time. But with We Are PR Clothing, it's been great to see um, your business grow across the years. I've been following it. I believe it's a Two or three years, I think, I've been following you initially through YouTube, and then mm-hmm. um, now following your business growth. But do you mind just going over, as well as introducing yourself, about um, how the idea of We Are PR Clothing came about? Yeah, absolutely. So We Are PR Clothing was actually a, kind of a brainchild of mine and my wife's. Um, at the time, we were just dating, but my wife and I now, so Laura and I, run this company called We Are PR Clothing, and we were kind of involved with YouTube. We'll just take it from the very beginning. We were kind of involved with YouTube, kind of more on like the fitness and gym side. And we were going to like the expos, like the the Arnold, which is pretty big over here in the States. And Mm. uh, we were going to that. We were seeing all these companies really, they were at these shows, but they really didn't care about people. Mm. And, and, and the more we were around this, it was just like, man, it's just a, it's just a shame that these huge companies legitimately just don't care about their own people Mm. the people that are supporting them and giving them their money they literally are just seen as a paycheck so we didn't really know what we wanted to do um i i knew that i kind of didn't want to work for somebody else for the rest of my life i knew that i kind of wanted to try a dream um so we we legitimately just sat down one day and we're like well what can we do Mm. we know that we basically sat down and made a chart of what Laura's extremely good at and what my strengths are. And we said, okay, well, here's what we've got. What can we do with that? Okay. And out of that basically came this crazy idea of a clothing line. Hmm. Um, so from there, it was like, okay, well, we, we both want to be in the fitness industry. We kind of want to change the way that companies interact with their people. Yeah. But we're a newly married company couple like we don't have a whole lot of money we don't have a we didn't have a whole lot of resources Mm. so for our that that's kind of how this idea of like the limited printed shirts came about is for the simple fact that i couldn't afford to buy huge bulks of shirts we could literally only afford to buy a handful and the Mm. first prints that we ever made were prints that basically just reflected lessons and things that we are going through in our life Mm. Um, one, two of our first sayings, I actually three of our first sayings that have really stuck with us. One was never stop, which is, I mean, that's a cliche. You always keep moving forward kind of thing. There was pursue your passion was another one of our first designs, which was exactly what I felt like we were doing. And the third one, which has kind of been the biggest hit across the board Mm. has been, um, shatter expectations. Yeah. And that, and I feel like that's exactly what we're trying to do. Um, now fast forward a couple of years where we were printing our own shirts, we're doing our own designs out of our one room apartment. And mm. now we've been blessed with enough support. We've been blessed with so many amazing things that we're in a house and we're still printing out of a garage, but, but things are just going really well. And it's just, I, I, I just can't express just how thankful we are for every single person that, that buys something from us. And, and in order to kind of change that mindset from, from just, mm customers viewing us as a company that gives them a shirt and they give us money we take the time to handwrite a letter 
And, it, yeah. and it's not just like a little index card. It, I mean, this is a full three, four paragraph letter to yeah. every single customer. Mm-hmm. just to express how thankful we are. And I, and I think that's what people really resonate with us. It's just they, they see that we care about them and that they are absolutely more than a number to us. So I have to say... So I, I guess in a, yeah. in a nutshell, that's that's kind of how we started and where we're at now. Yeah, I mean, it's brilliant because although you said um, the expressions you use, such as pursue your passion or shatter expectations, sound slightly cliché... I, mm-hmm. You could say it does, but I really think coming from you and your company, it it's not like it has a different a meaning, but I just think it's so much more um, authentic coming from you because you really do mean it. Um, yeah, and I think that's kind of the cool stuff with with mm-hmm. kind of, I don't want to say generic phrases, but everyone mm-hmm. is going to take that to mean something different. Mm-hmm. Pursuing your passion to me is going to be chasing after this clothing line and trying to make a difference in the world and show people how important they are. Pursuing yeah. your passion to Timmy may be being in shape and losing 100 pounds. Yeah. Like it, it has a different meaning for everyone. I think that's the cool thing about it. Because did you find that when you initially had the idea that um, there were a lot of thoughts that came to mind saying, oh, this is ridiculous, what's the point? At, oh, at 100%, absolutely. Yeah. And absolutely. how did you get there past yeah. that? Um, you know, they were always kind of there in the back of my mind. And I mean, yeah. even even now today, I, I mean, I'd be lying if I said every single day is a rock star day and I don't have doubts. Um, yeah. But literally, the only way that I kept moving forward is, is to literally just keep going. And, mm. and if I ever yes. get to that point where it does get overwhelming, I, I, I will literally go into our orders and, and just look at the amount of people who have, who have supported us. And, it, and it's almost my duty. It, it, it's our kind of... It's our mission. Everyone that's bought something from us deserves this. Mm. So, that, so I, I try to I try to put the customer and everybody else who supported us in the forefront of my thoughts oh. because I don't want to let anyone down. Of no, of course. Actually, sorry. Um, just to briefly pause you, Alex. I forgot to say to everyone that if you'd like to ask us a question, because we're going to be talking for roughly just under half an hour and then taking questions from you for fifteen minutes. So leave it. Um, on Facebook in the comments or on Instagram and we'll scroll back through and answer any questions after um, we've just talked for under half an hour. But I really do um, think, um, although you're saying looking at the people who have bought your product, that's brilliant. And also mm-hmm. being around people who've got, um, sim- maybe not um, p- trying to build a clothing line, but I've just personally found through YouTube that's, um, and you, you, we were saying before we started about people talking to each other and interacting um, on a very personal level in the comment section, just we motivate each other. <laughs> mm. Oh, absolutely. And I, th- I think there's, I think, okay, so if I can give something that everyone can see, it, it's really about perspective. Mm. It, it's realizing that you've been blessed with today. You've been blessed with so many people. It, it, it's very easy to focus on the negative things like you don't have enough money or you don't know what you're doing or you don't feel like yeah. you have support. But if you look at the big picture, I mean, you, there are so many things going for so many people. Yeah. It's exactly. all about what you choose to focus on. Because um, you know, another big, obviously, because uh, um, you're a good mate, but on um, the main, a big reason for having you on as well is uh, just because you're demonstrating that you're pursuing your passion. Just because there um, will be people watching. And face from Facebook, Instagram Live, who are great sportsmen who want to have told me they want to do things, um, speaking generically. But sometimes, as soon as they, I've said, "Well, why not try it?" There's been a doubt comment that's come into mind, and a, a big thing for me is, uh, well, eventually, in a nutshell, I'd like to have a membership website where I help people with um, nutrition and um, fat loss, so mm-hmm. I can interact with them one to one, but also pursuing CrossFit there are definitely as you were saying every day there are always things I'm thinking like oh I don't know how to do I really have no idea how to do the Olympic lifts yet but I'm thinking eight yeah. years time and I mean and it I think just you're a great example of showing how if you keep working at something consistency can really pay off no matter how long that time's been oh absolutely and, and I don't want you guys to I don't, I don't want the listeners to get this confused yeah I still don't have an idea of what I'm doing. Like every single day I'm still facing challenges that I don't really know how to do. 
I mean, especially right now, it's kind of tax season, and this is still a new concept to me, and I'm still learning taxes and all that stuff. So, so even once you get into whatever your your dream is, whatever, once you get going, you're still going to face adversities. There's still going to be things that kind of stop you and make mm-hmm. you kind of sit back and figure things out, and and that's part of the journey. And I think that's why I love it. Is it's just it's something new every single day. Yeah, and I don't know if you found this, um, but. I found whenever there's been some sort of setback, whenever I've come out the other side, it's uh, I've always found I've learned from something, whether that be through a personal experience, um, one hundred percent, yeah, or if somebody else is going through like a a hard time, or whether it's an injury and then coming out the other side, like I'm, I'm trying to think one that um, comes to mind. Well, I, I'm tr- I can't think of any specific example, but um, when somebody's injured, that they um, learn something else around. So if they're into a, a specific sport, they maybe work on their flexibility rather than doing um, weightlifting because they're yeah. um, too injured to be able to do that. And then they improve in that um, that aspect of the sport. But although you might have a few, you might be a few steps back when you come back from injury. Um, it's almost like the two steps. No, is it two steps forward, one step back kind of thing? So there you go. Just thinking the long term. That's the one. Yeah. So I can... yeah. And I- I think you really hit the nail on the head right there. Is it's really long term. I mean that you you may have setbacks, for example, an injury or something short term that takes you out of the game for six, yeah. eight. It may even take you out of the game for a year. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if you look at you've if you look at like the average lifespan, you've still got eighty more years to keep going. Like yeah. even though I mean, I think sometimes we get too narrow minded and we just look at well, this is bad and this is happening right now. But there's, I mean, I mean, it's all about perspective, and in the big game, that's that's kind of why I think that you and I are in the positions that we're in. Is it's is it's okay that it's it's okay that we hit small setbacks every single day mm. or once a week or whatever that number may be. But we've got an idea of long term what we're shooting for. Mm-hmm. Definitely, it's um, cause, and actually around that topic, do you are you the kind of person who likes to sit down? Um, maybe at the start of a year or start of... Um, so I certainly have my own way of doing it, but with goal setting, mm-hmm. um, is there a certain way you like to do it? So you have daily goals, weekly goals, yearly or... You, you know, this is a this is funny because Laura and I are two completely different people and we oh. do this two completely opposite ways. And there's not a right or wrong way to do it. Yeah. What it really comes down to is knowing who you are and what works for you. So what works for me is I one one of my strengths is is looking out way long term. So what I do is I I oh. have goals right now on my wall for the next 36 to 24 months. So nice. I've got 2 to 3 year goals. And then mm-hmm. what I do is I basically break that down work backwards and I say okay, yeah. well if I want to have XYZ in 3 years, what needs to happen in 2019 and in 2018 to get there. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And then I, I, I think the smallest increment that I go down to is monthly goals. I mean, I've, I've got daily checklists of stuff that I kind of break down of what I yeah. need to get done daily, but, but monthly is probably the shortest that I go. Okay. So, and actually, w- would you mind just um, obviously only share what you can share, but um, yeah. what your kind of um, any of those, what any of those goals are or what even kind of your daily routine looks like? Cause just to give us an idea of the amount of, Time, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's look at uh, one of the big goals that we're trying to do now is position ourselves so we are a much larger, and I won't go into numbers or anything, mm, but we're, we're yeah. trying to get positioned much larger in the fitness industry and kind of get yeah. that demographic. Mm. So in order to do that, um, right now, we, we were doing one release every other month. So in order to combat that and start getting more people aware and bringing this message to more people, we're going to start upping that into one release every single month. So what Mm. does that do? So then from there, I've got to figure out, well, that means every month I need to have designs, have shirts, source the shirts, order them. And and that's kind of how I do stuff is, is, is I've got that (laughs) giant goal of, of, or or let's even look at a shorter term one. I, I want to have a building. I want to. I, I, yeah. I would love to give my wife her house back, and not completely <laughs> take over the garage, the kitchen, the spare bedroom, and the living room with orders and, and packing and all that stuff. Yeah. So, so That's how do brilliant. I get there? Well, I figure out a building that I'd like. I figure out what that means sales wise that we have to do, and just work backwards yeah. from that. That's quite funny. We can. So you've taken over <laughs> your wife's house. I've taken over our garden. 
in my person. <laughs> you kind of slowly take over your own territory. You're kind of like, well, yeah, just, I know, right? Just, and just and luckily, it. I've got an amazing wife that supports me and, and absolutely loves this journey that we're on together. So that makes mm. it a little bit easier. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, because you can both um, help encourage each other. Absolutely. And I, and I think that's that's another thing that, going back to your earlier point of of how do I keep moving past it, and I know not everyone has this position where you, you may not have a significant other, but you've got a friend or you've got a family member that you can go to and say, look, here's kind of what I'm, I'm fighting through. Do you mind if we just talk about it? Yeah. It, and, and I, mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry. Um, carry on. Like, finish your um, point first. Sorry, and then I'll... And I just don't. I just don't think that. I, I think communication is something that a lot of people struggle with. Mm. And personally, I just don't think there's such thing as over communicating. Mm. So I, so I try to communicate my issues, our successes, and everything to to everyone in my inner circle. Mm. And 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 that's just part of who I am, I guess. But yeah. but I think that over communication is, is critical. Okay, because um, I mean, there's a, a, a I've got re- a good friend called uh, you, you probably know him actually, Peter Peter Lee of um, the Bourne community. Okay. Um, and he's a, a guy who's very, who's got um his life coaching business, and um, okay. again that was another thing. I mean, you can touch upon it if you'd like to. Um, but I'm finding you were just saying about communication of um people's issues they may have and being vocal about it. Mm-hmm. Um, about how people can be quite keep it very much to themselves and then struggle with it on their own because I've found um, well personally um, as I said on my channel before a combination of my um, Christian faith but also um, goal setting in regards to lifetime goals um, goals every decade goals every I, I'm more uh, lifetime goals and then Goals that I have a rough idea of when I'd like to do it by, but that's yeah. no way set in stone. Okay. Um, I find that is really beneficial just to mental health. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think it I think it really depends on the person. I think mm. that th- there may be some of you that are listening right now who, who that just seems like a crazy idea. Why would you ever plan something out 10 years down the road, Yeah. three years down the road, and you may be the kind of person that needs to have monthly goals, and then you break that down into weekly goals and daily goals. And if you do, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You just need to figure out what works for you. And no matter what Albert or myself has to say, you can take this, our, our advice, and kind of try it out and taste it for yourself and see what works. Yeah. But ultimately, you've got to figure out what works for you. Mm-hmm. And there's, uh, and there's nothing that's too ridiculous in regards to goals, because you might be oh, thinking absolutely. to yourself that oh, thanks all the love I'm getting on Facebook guys I appreciate hitting the like button and the love button um, that there's there's no goal that's too big or too small so even if you have goals because um, I watched a video recently I've forgotten who it was because um, just to briefly touch upon it I would love to be able to um, open gyms and open some sort mm-hmm. of um, so not fast food like as in yeah, well, I won't actually say any names just in case, but uh, you know, like really, <laughs> um, like deep fried things, but like um, fast food chains that which are um, more healthy in uh, lots of different countries across the world, and teach them about how they can be flexible with their diet, with their um, local cuisine. If you see what I mean, and that's a that's something that I don't mean when I say n- it's non achievable. Like as in, I'm going to give it my best shot because I really want to. It's one of those things that I love having that to be able to work towards. So I'm just what I mean that by this is that there's n- no goal that's too big or too small. I mean, absolutely. See. And actually, with um, I think well, I'm I'm not sure if you touched upon it, but do you mind just going over if you don't mind your like what a daily routine looks like for you in the the life of We Are PR? Yeah, absolutely. So every single day. I've got my little checklist, and I literally nice. mark down everything that I need to do. Yeah. So, I, I mean, my, my days kind of vary. I mean, uh, like I said earlier, right now it is kind of i, I got to get all the tax stuff done. But but a nor- well, let's just go through like a very high-level normal day. Yeah. A normal day is, is I'll get up, <laughs> and the very first thing I do is pack orders in the morning. Is I'll, I'll have all the packing slips. I'll have all my notes. I'll have all that stuff written out. And the first thing I will do is I will I will get all the orders packed so we can get out 
to the post office and get them off that very day. I try to get every single order out within 24 hours of it being placed. Nice. Um, so that kind of eats up, d- depending on how big the day is, obviously like release days are usually a little bit more high traffic, but mm. d- depending on how many orders we have during the day, that, that eats up a little bit of time. And then um, another thing that I do consistently every single day is I, I will chunk out an hour and a half to three hours every single day and reply to every single person's message on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, yeah. whatever it is. And when I get to the end of that list, I, I, I go interact with everyone's content. Nice. Well, so whether that means leaving a comment on your picture on Instagram, watching your YouTube video, mm-hmm. um, and engaging with your live Facebook, wh- whatever that means. And, and this this all maps back to what I'm trying to do with, with building that deep community mm-hmm. of – of showing that companies can care and that it is scalable and you can do it. Yeah. Even though, even though a large majority of them don't. And I think that's one thing that separates us apart. Um, mm. So that's pretty consistent every day. Yeah. Another thing that I do pretty consistently is, is either create or basically put together the content for the next day. So right. whether that's, I mean, whether that's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, uh, mm. um, uh, I think that's it. Twitter. Um, okay. Um, well, I, I try to put that strategy together. And again, all that, every single post I do maps back to trying to create a sense of community and showing that companies can care about yeah. the people that support them. And when I say support them, I'm not talking about people that have just bought a shirt from us. Mm. Now, I'm talking about anyone who's even who's liked something of ours, who's left some encouraging words for us. Yeah, I, I think there's a big disconnect there, and I just want to show people that I truly do care. Yeah, definitely, that does definitely sets you apart. I think from other people. And and I mean, ultimately, that's the end goal. I mean, that's what we're trying to do is is really is really close that gap between between a company and a person. Yeah. Because have you found that you've had a different type kinds of engagement with the social media platforms that you've used? Just having oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, it, it's different even across, even across the board. Yeah. I mean, it, in, Instagram and YouTube, it, the people that I interact with on Instagram are different than the people that I interact with on YouTube. And yeah. even if it's the exact same person, you have a different attitude and different outlook on stuff on Instagram than you do on mm. YouTube. People are usually a little bit more uh, laid back on YouTube. Yeah. They're a little bit more serious on Instagram. And then on Twitter, they're just completely themselves. And yeah. th- it's just kind of knowing the little nuances of, of interacting with people. Because every single social platform is different. And we all go to different. I mean, if they were all the same, we would only have one. Yeah, But true. we have all these different options. And people go to each one just to figure out or, or just to see different kinds of content. Yeah. Because of... Uh... It's just because I only ask because I've got, um, as well as myself being interested, I've got quite a few um, people who ask me a little bit about how I use um, social media. But I really mm-hmm. did find that it was, I started, I started off very local and then word of mouth has been quite um, helpful. And again, um, I'm definitely no you know massive company or anything, but like Alex, I try, I actually probably... Need, probably not to the extent that Alex manages to um, reply to people, but trying to build that sense of community um, is a big mm-hmm. thing, I think, with the uh, people. But it's um, it's interesting about the um, journey and how things um, can change over time um, with um, what can happen. But did you say um, with We Are PR Clothing, do you think you'll stick with just clothing or you're going to expand even uh you you know we we kind of talked as a team recently and i think for the next we we definitely want to expand um i I think for now the challenge with expanding is just the initial (laughs) investment that it takes to kind of get into a new market yeah um which as a company i don't feel like we're ready for yet i really want to nail the clothing before i try to before i try to move on to something else because uh, this kind of yeah. goes back to my thesis of being uh, of depth over width is yeah. Albert and I were talking before this and 
I one thing the way that I approach social media is I, as I go for depth. I go for mm. knowing every single person as best as I can, and I don't focus on how how wide our number is. I don't focus on how many people we have. And I think that's the same way I approach the clothing. Is I want to make sure that we've mastered and we've got a really good foundation in the clothing before I try to step out and kind of take a risk with I, I don't know kitchenware or or snowboarding or I, I, I don't know whatever that other avenue may be for us. I want to make sure that we're very well grounded and we have a great foundation first. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. There, being guilty of thinking, how can I expand further and further? Um, oh, and, I, and the... I think that's a that's a good thing to have. Mm. I think it's always good to be looking for how to how to grow. Um, but but I think too many people, it, myself included, the my initial thoughts were, well, I need I need to encompass more and more and more so I can grab more and more people, but. Yeah. It, it, that's great, but you've got to have a you've got to have a foundation. You've got to have something to build that building on top of. Yeah, definitely. And actually, um, if you don't mind me um asking, yeah, um, because I've had the question a lot recently. Um, it could be quite a controversial topic, but about well, it's probably slightly different in America, but in the UK, okay. it seems like almost the the norm is to go um, secondary school, then at 18 go to college, and then after college when you're... Um, oh, no, sorry. Um, you, I think you end college here about 18, and then you go to university. It seems to be a thing. Um, and then you go into a job um, that you're not really sure what that's going to be. But mm. did you kind of go through that process, or did you find... Because I've just seen that with people, that, and then they've gone into a job that they don't necessarily enjoy, whereas I think we're trying to make something that we want to do. Yeah, and, and I, I definitely, I mean, that's the background I came from. I, I went to college. I have, a, I have a degree in physics and engineering, and that's what I did for two years was, was, I, was I was a mechanical engineer who, ah, uh, yeah. who worked in, in a nine-to-five job. And for me, personally, I, that was part of my journey. I, I feel yeah. like I, I had to go through that. And w- what it did for us was um, it, it really helped from starting a business standpoint, it really helped me kind of manage my time a little bit because I only had, I mean, I had eight hours at this other job, not working on what I wanted to. And it made me really have to use my time efficiently when I got home, which has helped me now that I'm full time on this. I I don't kind of, I don't have a whole lot of downtime Mm -hmm. even when I work on this all the time. Um, But yeah, I, I think that's definitely the case. And I know there's a big push in the state right now that there's a lot of people that don't think you need college or yeah. or other stuff like that. And I I think that there are some professions that you absolutely have to have college no matter what. Yeah. I mean, if if I'm going into surgery because of of uh, I have a tumor that needs removed or whatever, mm. I don't want Jimmy John working off the side of the road with no college degree yeah. tearing into me mm-hmm. like. I, I feel more comfortable, and and I mean, there, there's a lot of things that I think people need to go to college for. Yeah. Now, is it 100 percent required or absolutely necessary as it used to be? I don't think so. I think there's a yeah. lot that you can do, but I think a lot of people want to just write it off and say, "Well, it's not really that important." Yeah, I think you've nailed it there because there's on one hand, um, I'm very similar, <laughs> which um, to become an Olympic nutritionist, I know I need. Um, something which is the equivalent of a master's after my undergrad degree, but mm-hmm. then on the um, what was it? On the other hand, um, oh, what was it? I, well, I think it was. I think you um, kind of touched a, um, upon it there about um, I think going to. Well, I've just found some people being um, forced forced sometimes to go to university, but. Um, it will come back to me. I think I'll have to. I'll, um, I'll think about it as we before we uh, um, think because it will be something that I just um, sparks my memory. <laughs> yeah, and and I I think yeah. that's how it is with any elite or or high level job where you're kind of in charge of other people's lives. Mm. I mean, you don't want you you don't want some random guy building bridges or buildings that that mm. doesn't really know what they're doing. Uh-huh. And the same way, you don't want your Olympic coaches to. Yeah, do give out bro diets yeah. that that don't really work. Mm-hmm. You know, and and on the flip side of that, there's also a very 
there, there's a school side of it, but I also am a huge believer in hands-on experience. Yeah. Especially, so if we look at yourself, for example, yes, schooling is going to be very important because you're going to get the theory mm. and you're going to get the thought process behind all of it, but also getting down in the nitty gritty, doing those diet plans, doing those training plans, doing all that stuff is going yeah. to do nothing but help you because you're going to learn from that just as much as you are going to learn about the theory. Well, you're right. And you, you actually might have um, done this yourself with um, um, maybe just producing clothing. But I found, because um, I, I do sports coaching, my local council, t- coaching different sports and working mm-hmm. with different um, different demographics um, has actually really been quite helpful, again, with learning and just even doing bits of voluntary. But with um, what I was going to say earlier was um, when you were, I think you well, you've already touched upon it, after you completed your um, degree, but doing a job um, alongside building up the business was quite necessary to have that income um, Absolutely. to start with. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of other life lessons that come with that. I mean, when, when you're working a nine to five, you learn how to deal with people. You learn how to get along with people that you don't necessarily yeah. see eye to eye with. I, I think there's a lot yeah. of at least for me personally, I can't speak for everyone, but for me personally, there were there was a ton of life lessons that I had to go through that I needed to have in order to get where I am today. Yeah, definitely. And I wouldn't change it for, I mean, I wouldn't change it for anything right now. No, you're right. And it, even if they're enjoyable life lessons or sometimes it's more of a struggle, sometimes you oh, absolutely. realize in the future absolutely. that you, they were necessary to do. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, that, that goes back to what we hit on the beginning is it is long term. It's it's not just your struggles or whatever you go through right now. Mm. It, it's it's the big picture. It's your whole time you're on this earth. Definitely. Policy, what you're doing with We Are PR is really, is really great, and I'm looking forward to seeing it expand in the future. I appreciate right? that. I mean, it means a lot to us, man. I appreciate it. Be right for the last 10, like 10 minutes or so, if we just take a few questions from... Let's do uh, it. Facebook. So I think we've had some people who have been writing some bits. So I'm scrolling through now. Oh, now that's a bit strange. We've had Alex Mershon saying you guys are the best. I'm all over it, man. Was that you? That was me. Oh, yeah, was it? No, oh I like thought it was somebody right on your. That. I thought it was somebody on your account. That was why it's slightly. Oh no! I'm oh no! Me. I'm uh, multitasking over here. <laughs> Thank you, Dan Sherlock, for saying welcome. Boom. Jordan Young says, hey, thank you, Jordan, for watching. How to build up your brand in the fitness industry? Well, it's quite a broad question. Um, okay, we, we can do that. Yeah, I can yeah. work with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so I think you really need to figure out what you want to do. I mean, the fitness yeah. industry is very broad. Mm. Um, if you're asking that question, you you may have a more specific idea of if you want to be like in the powerlifting, you want to be in the bodybuilding, you want to be in overall like – uh, nutrition, overall, just wellness. And then you've got to know what you want to do. Um, and, and then I would give you the exact same advice that, that I've been putting into practice is figure out what you want and then basically yeah. work back, step, step, step backwards and, yeah. uh, and, and build that brand. Now, I, I don't think that brand building is fast. Okay. Mm, yeah. I think a lot of people want that brand very quickly, mm. um, but it, it, it takes a long time. It, it's not something that happens overnight. And um, if if you do have a more, um, if you do have a niche or, or you have a very specific side of fitness that you're trying to get into, um, sh- shoot me either a direct message or an email at weareprclothing at gmail.com and yeah. we'll, we'll step through it and figure out whatever whatever works for you, bud. Uh, interesting, because I found, actually we've just got a question come through, so we'll answer that in just a second. But... Um, okay. I think you were saying, oh yeah, with the, I found with content and producing it that minimal amounts of views were um, were being watched on my YouTube channel, but a way of mm-hmm. looking at that is thinking, that is still three people, that is still... Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, think about that. I mean, even if you get 10 views... That's ten people that are watching your content. I, I, I mean, if if you go out into your your town square right now and just start shouting about, and you have ten people come up and listen to you, yeah. like that's huge. Absolutely, yeah. And even if it's just one person, you think uh, it's just quite incredible. It, right, exactly, I agree too. I mean, don't I agree mean that in an arrogant way, by the way. We we just have, talking about our experiences. Um, yes. Do you mind attacking this question first? Sorry, attacking is yep. the wrong word. But um, and then I'll put my spin on it. 
Absolutely. But it's um because <laughs> this is quite a, a very relevant question um okay. to a lot of people. But the person said, Do you ever have such down days you don't know what to do? And then how do you ever get over them or get through them? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I don't think if you get to any level of success, you're ever going to get past that. There, There's always days where, uh, I mean, I, I, I just don't know what to do. And one thing, one one very practical tip I can give you yeah. is, is whatever social media you're on, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, whatever, go back to your post Find the three people that liked it and mm. literally shoot them a direct message or comment on their timeline and just say, thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Reach out, thank them because they took time out of their day to say thank you to you. Yeah. Not, not only does that, that, that won't necessarily push you forward, but that gives you a good feeling that, that gives yeah. you a good feeling of realizing that people care about you Yeah. and that you're not a hundred percent lost. Mm hmm. And then from from there, yeah. after I do that, the first thing I would do would be to look at the picture. I feel like I'm hitting this point pretty hard. Is, is look at the picture, the big scale of it. Start chunking it out into actionable steps and and work backwards from it. That's a very good point. And make it not too overwhelming because, like from a um, like a mental health per- perspective, if yeah the if the problem seems so or the challenge seems so big, as you say. I think what a key thing is being around, obviously, um, personally for me, my Christian faith plays a big part, but also um, being around a community of people that you know support you and and love you um, and that you can open up to them um, is very, is a very big thing. (laughs) And to be honest, sometimes uh, a combination of that and, uh, and honestly, just sometimes doing exercise and releasing a lot of stress that way can be very helpful to uh um get to uh get through some of the harder times but definitely offloading to people you trust i think is probably very key yeah and and if you if you feel like you don't have someone that you can offload to reach out to albert or myself because i I can promise you either one of us will be here and we we will take the time and listen to whatever whatever is bothering you or, or whatever you're struggling with Sometimes mm. it just takes that outside person looking in to say, oh, wh- why don't you just try this? And yeah. just like that, you're back up on your feet. And no problem, by the way, because they said thank you um, to our... Great question. But, um, awesome question. Yeah, because you're right, because I'm, honestly, I'm perfectly happy to listen. But then, uh, as you were saying, um, also Alex was off- kindly offering as well, sometimes even talking to somebody who you're who you don't even know can be, I think, beneficial in a way, just because they're anonymous. Um, if mm-hmm. you if you saw it sounds slightly odd, but I know some people who prefer to do it that way. Um, in the future, in the in the past, sorry. Oh, and hello, Sean and Louis, who have been watching as well. Oh, oh, actually, we've got another one. Um, we got. I think this will be the could be the last one. We might have time for one more. So if you've got okay. one more question, guys, after this one, then do let us know on Facebook or Insta. Jack says I'm going. To I work from eight until five in brackets. Okay. Usually awake about six thirty a.m. What kind of foods or products can I eat before I decide to go for a run? As I have a half marathon coming up. Um, oh, you take in, that one. I'm not a fan of running. In about one month, and usually I lack motivation when I get when I get home. Let me read it one more time. Work from eight to five. Jack, I'm, I think Jack, you're saying if you're saying that you go for a run in the morning then a lot of this is going to be trial and error (coughs) trial and error but standard um protocol personally for me i like to go out for a run on an empty stomach in the morning but i do eat quite late the night before so you will have to experiment by the timing your meal timing um but sometimes what i've seen people really enjoy in the past is a fast acting carbohydrate which is slightly higher in sugar um, usually that comes in the form of dried fruit, banana, or an apple or something where they get a quick source of glycogen and energy from. Um, so have a slight insulin spike in order to help you go for a run, usually around 30 minutes before, well, 20, 30 minutes beforehand, so it, but it doesn't bloat them at the same time. But um, if you're finding that you're going for a run after work, 
and maybe having a meal slightly higher in complex carbohydrates and a lot more fibre. Sometimes people can feel a little bit um, lethargic from having complex carbs like brown rice um, and whole grain breads um, from the experience I've had with working with people. But again, you'll have to just try and error this. Um, so having a, quite a large meal two to three hours before, so you've got um, a steady source of um, energy for when you go for a run, depending on how long it is, and then again having maybe a um, slightly faster acting carbohydrate before uh, the actual run. I mean that's mine. And did you say you wanted me? Oh, when I get home it's five p.m. not five a.m. Oh, so it's the it's the one in the evening. Oh, brilliant. I mean you can add to that if you want to, but if you want I can just take that one. Um, I I think the only thing that I can add to that is from the motivation side. Oh yeah. And and for for me. I, I think I felt yeah. I went through something very similar that you did when I would work my nine to five job and then I would come home and I would have to switch gears to working on business. Yeah. Um, for me, the I, I, I tried two different things. The first thing I tried was I'd come home, take a half hour and literally just take it for myself. Mm -hmm. Just get something to eat, unwind, take a half hour and then get back to it. And what I found personally for me now that might work for you and then you may feel energized and ready to go on a run and ready to go but for me i just found myself completely lethargic after that and i didn't want to do anything mm -hmm. so so for me what i ended up doing was I, I did my nine to five i came home and even if it was something tiny even if it was uh, of writing up a thank you letter or a thank you note i, I made sure that was the first thing i did e even before i changed out of my clothes from work just to get my mind going to say that, look, you, you, there's there's only 24 hours in this day and you can't afford just to sit down and, and kind of lose the day. Yeah. Now, I, I'm kind of the very end of the spectrum. Mm. So, so, so this, that may not work for you, but, but there's two options that you can definitely try and, and, and see which one works for you. Yeah. So it's definitely uh, one of those things where you have to give it a try and see what works. But I think it's a really nice point you touched upon about being in your work clothes, doing it just to get your mind right. Absolutely. And I mean, I mean, that's what worked for me, but again, that's not going to work for everybody. So, but, but I do encourage you guys to, to try it. Yeah. To definitely. taste as many things as you can. Absolutely. Cause you know, Alex, it's been such a pleasure having you on. And if you'd like to, oh. um, Oh, thank you. Alex. Well, I saw your comment. It pops up here. Um, <laughs> if you'd like to go and support Alex, then you can either type in www.wear is it prclothing.com? You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Or just or there on Instagram. What's your um use, uh, your name? Honestly, I mean the, the biggest way that you guys can help me yeah. out is is I don't I don't need a follow. I, I don't need I don't need a shirt. Yeah. I don't need you to go purchase a shirt. What I would love for you guys to do today within the next twenty four hours do one do one positive thing for one random person. I don't care if it's just smiling at, at smiling at someone. I don't care if it's holding a door. I don't care if it's picking something up for someone that they drop. I mean, honestly, that that's what I, that would make my, that would mean the absolute world to me if you would pass that on. Good man. That is, that is brilliant. If I'm honest. Um, <laughs> and just you to, like that. Yeah, definitely. I think that was, that was, that was brilliant actually. And then just to add to that, well, slightly um, not related, but, Never be worried about if you need to speak to any of us or n Absolutely. never try and hold feelings in if you need to. We're just touching on the mental health side of it. If you need to speak to somebody, we're always all ears. Um, and we just had somebody comment saying we will, so they've agreed. <laughs> that awesome. That, I'm holding you. Was that on Facebook? I'm going to go find that person on Facebook and I'm <laughs> going I'm to follow up with that tomorrow. That's brilliant. <laughs> be on the lookout. <laughs> all right. I will follow up. But thank you again, Alex, very much for joining us this hey, evening. No problem at all. And um, hopefully we'll have you on at some point again in the future. Absolutely. Definitely. Look forward to it. Great, great podcast. Is it best one yet? Best one yet? Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to do a good deed for somebody. And this is Albert Aldridge, the nutrition coach of Albert Aldridge Fitness, signing out. I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> The Double A Nutrition Coach Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>